Hello, my friends. Today I would like to share how I started out in the car. The first pictures I'm going to show you are of the car. It was a 2004 3.8 liter Pontiac Grand Am. The car was paid for. I didn't owe any money for it. It was in pretty good shape because in the previous year I had replaced the rims and the tires. I had already replaced the headlights. I had uh, replaced the window wiper motor. So over the years I did learn how to do cart maintenance. My husband's were pretty much useless in those areas. I learned how to do a lot of things in the past. Uh, so I had to figure out how to make my car roadworthy and make sure it would last me a while. So I started doing a lot of research on YouTube of how to do things and how to set up my car. I knew I would have to have a comfortable bed because my legs were bad. I had only been out of the wheelchair for a couple of years, not even really. And uh, so I couldn't have my legs down on the floor for eight hours or sitting in a seat for eight hours. I had a bad disc in my lower back and a uh, deteriorated disc in my neck. I knew I would have to lay down. If there's anything important when you're living in a vehicle, you do have to have a comfortable bed. That's probably the most important thing you could do. So I set out to do the research on YouTube. I found a video, showed me how to make uh, a creative frame for my bed. I obviously had to adapt it to my car because it didn't quite work. So the measurements were completely different. I've tried to find that video since then. I wish I could link it to you. But you can look on YouTube and find a lot of different creative ways to build a bed in your car. I wish I could share that link with you. Anyhow, I'm going to just kind of tell you what I had to do. So the very next thing I had to do is get all the measurements for the bed. I had to measure from the front to the back seat. I had to measure from the floor to the height that I wanted the bed. And from the passenger door to the center console I had in the between my bucket seats. So that made it a little complicated. And plus I had a, I guess it's called the hump in the middle of the vehicle from the front to the console and then from the back of the console to the seat, back seat. So I had to measure all that out, make sure that I, when I'm setting up my frame, it would sit level on the floor and still be level on the platform that I'm going to use for the bed. So I used two by twos to make the frame and I used half inch plywood to make the platform and to sit the, sit the platform on the framing that I built. I ended up having, having to take the front seat out and the back seat out because there's no way I could get a platform bed level in the car otherwise. And the back seat was higher than the front of the platform so I had to measure the legs exactly so I could raise the front up button it would the glove come part would and would we be in the way so I had to get the right height anyhow so I took the back seat out and then I measured the legs that I needed to do the frame and measured the distance between the glove box to the back seat and uh, cut the, all the leg pieces first then I cut the rectangle frame for the length of the bed and the end pieces and then I attached all that then I had to cut the plywood and I did have to have a little bit of a curve in the front of the bed uh, where the console was from the door to the console was only 18 inches the rest of the bed I had 
after the curve, I could uh, curve it out to where it get get about 20 or 22 inches. I can't remember exactly. But when you're cutting out or measuring the frame, you need to make sure that you have just enough width to be able to fit your platform. So anyhow, um, that's kind of where I went from there. So I took the front passenger seat out and then I built the frame. I'll go on from there. I will tell you, if I had to do it over again, I would probably put a board on the floor that make the floor level all the way from uh, the front under the glove compartment all the way to the back of where the seat was. The only reason I didn't want to do that, I would lose about three to four inches of height uh, in the car. Plus, I would block the heater vents, so I needed to have them open. But if I would do it again, I think I would make an opening in the platform on the bottom, on the floor. And then everything would be level and easy to build the legs. So if I would cook, recommend something, I would say use a flat board plywood floor platform before you add the platform for the bed. So if you notice from the picture I just showed of the floor in the front passenger side, there's a lot of areas where the floor is raised for the seat brackets and the edges, the sides of the floor. So I had to work really around all that raised area to do the legs correctly. Couldn't put them on the edge of the frame. I had to bring them in a little bit. I took the carpeting completely out and insulated the entire floor with Reflectix. Then I had to clean the carpet and put it back in. The next thing I did is take out the back seat and I put Reflectix in the bottom where the seat would sit. When I put in the bed and the seat on top of that, I had a little storage underneath it. So that worked out for extra things like little ditty bags of socks and underwear, things I wanted to get to easily and quickly, like maybe toilet paper or something like that, or a little sweatshirt. I just used all that space. Every inch of the space had to be used. So I took out the seat and then I started working on the platform. I'm going to show you is how I set up the framing for the bed. I took the 2 by 4s connected all the 2 by 4s together on a flat surface, and then I had to cut my platform, the plywood, to fit that. And then I cut the platform, the plywood, in sections so I could put hinges on them so I could raise them up. And I'll show you those video uh, pictures. I wish I had a video clip to show you actually exactly how to, I did it. I never intended to show this on YouTube, so this is the best I can do. But the bed worked out really well, so here we go.
Well, I used a five-inch memory foam mattress with, with that I bought on Amazon for about a hundred dollars. It was twin size. Had to cut it down all the way down to fit my platform. That was the most comfortable bed. I put a nice cover on that and a quilt, and I used under the mattress to store extra bedding and books and things that are kind of flat under the mattress, so I had even more storage there. So I'll show you the final picture of the bed where it was all made, and the next video you'll see is more stuff about how I lived in the car. So as you could see from the video clips, the hinges worked out really well. I could lift the mattress either to the front or the back and get access to the areas under the bed with the hinged flip lids. So I could get in there easily, put things in there and take them out fairly easily. Uh, like I said, uh, if I had to do it over again, I probably would do it a little bit differently, but I measured where I would want the opening to come. In the last clip you saw, the, you saw that the bed had to extend into the trunk, so the back part of the back seat had to come off on one side. Uh, the, the, uh, the side behind the driver I could leave up so I would have a seat to sit in and use the seat portion of it for a platform and I'll, I'll show you more clips of that later but this is it for the today that I just wanted to share how I was able to make the bed itself I'll share a lot more information about how I made the car livable and the things I used in the part two of this series hope you enjoyed this clip Yes, my little dog Dolly was was a miniature Chihuahua. She weighed about four and a half pounds. She slept in that little narrow bed with me. When I turned, she had to turn so I wouldn't roll over on top of her. It was tight, but it worked. I lived in that car for eight months, and then I made do. And anybody can make do, unless you have a big animal. I don't know where it would sleep. Maybe in the seat next to the bed. Uh, anyhow, I loved my little setup in the car, but I got very sick. I couldn't keep living in the car. But I will want to show you how I lived that way. And hope you enjoy the little picture of my little dog, Dolly. She's gone. She got mauled by a coyote about a year later uh, when I had to stay in Coyote House in Y, Arizona for over a year when I had a lot of my health problems. But anyhow, she's gone. I miss her still too, very much to this day. I'm eventually going to get a little, another little dog, but I just loved Dolly. I can't never get a dog like her again. She was my service animal, and she saved my life more than once. Anyhow, I had to include her in this little video. 